Hey guys, I'm Daniel Norton. I'm here in the Hudson Valley with Uncle Leo. And today we're gonna to make some portraits on location. So I'm out here kind of walking around. I got equipment, basically it all fits in my backpack, a small flash, my Nikon. You know, we're kind of out here hiking. And we found this cool location by this rock. And we're gonna basically make a few different shots. We're gonna work with some of the natural light and then we're gonna fill in with flash. And then we're talk, gonna talk about kind of overpowering the light and making our own shot. Okay guys, so we're gonna do a couple of different options here. Um, basically, first of all, we're going to start with what's uh, the, the available light shot, and then we'll add a little fill flash, and we'll kind of go from there. I'm tethered into Capture One here. I've got my Profoto light over here on the, the stand, but I'm not using it yet. First, I'm going to turn the flash off, and I'm just going to get an ambient exposure. So, you know, if Uncle Leo was out here with me and I was going to take a shot of him naturally, I'm just going to look through the camera and adjust until he looks good to me. That looks pretty good. You know, he's... he's uh, He's looking good there, hey, Uncle Leo. Um, we can see the light's not in a great position though, right? It's, it's pretty much above him. It's a little bit bright. The background's blown out, which you might like. I mean, if you want that style, and if so, then you're good to go. But what fill flash will do for us is it will allow us to keep those same settings and just bring the shadows in a little bit, a little more detail, right? So I'm gonna leave all these settings the same and I'm gonna shoot one like this and then we'll see if we need to adjust it all. So it's literally the exact same shot, same settings, and now we're filled in, right? So you see the difference here. Now, we can see that here, right, is natural in a sense, right? He falls into shadow naturally, but here we've got nice light on the whole body. So, but basically our exposure in the background is the same. Let's say that we like that, right? But what's good about this, or what's cool about this is that you don't have to care about getting that background blown out now. Like if I want the background to be darker, I can literally just move my shutter speed up and down, you know? So let's say for instance, it was a little bit too bright for me. I can actually start dialing the background into where I like it. Let's say I'm gonna to go to 400th of a second. So now I'm in high speed sync and I can shoot that, right? Now I've got a shot where it's kind of more moody, right? We've got the backgrounds darker and he's still lit nicely. I mean, wherever the, the light is on him is gonna create the shape that you want. You can put it wherever you want. I got it kind of in a kind of slightly side lit way. Um, the background's kind of moody and dark. I did it pretty extreme there. I went basically a, a little more than the stop to show you guys the difference, but you can put it anywhere you want in between. That's really the key here is figuring out what you like and adjusting. So, so the first one was 1160. Let's go 250, so that's kind of in the middle. There we go. So that's kind of nice, right? So now we've got some detail on the background. He's here lit up again. He looks good, right? All that looks good. And we're basically good to go. So that's basically your, your extremes. Now, in this situation, I think, you know, this is probably where it looks the best. If you were, let's say, shooting with a big blue sky or something and you wanted to really make that pop, then maybe the darker exposure would be better. So this is where we play with it, right? Now, I've got the light here. And like I said, it's going into what's called high-speed sync. So let me just talk about that for one second. Essentially what high-speed sync is, is that normally your camera will sync at a certain speed. There's a, there's a X sync or a maximum sync speed. Certain flash equipment will allow you to go beyond that. But when you're doing it, um, even though I'm still shooting it at four, I'm actually using more power. So you do have to keep that in mind. Like I've got this pretty close to him and we're not quite maxed out, but we're about quarter power right now, right? But uh, you know, if you were shooting a person, uh, this would be a little more difficult with a single flash like this to get it super, super dark. We you know today we're, we're in the middle of the day and it's bright. But with this, you know, Uncle Lou's only a petite little guy, so it's nice and easy. It works for him, right? And that's basically how we do it, right? We got the natural looking fill flash, we've got the dark. And then the other thing we can do is we can actually work with the available light and then use our flash to add an accent. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, guys, I'm going to keep this super simple. What I'm doing here is I just literally turned Uncle Leo so that the light is now behind him. And the sun is actually over there. I'm going to use that as kind of light on his face. And then I'm going to blast him with the flash from the back to add a little contrast. I'm actually going to add this filter, which is a, uh, a CTO filter. So that's going to basically warm the flash up to give it some distinction, right, from the, uh, from the ambient light. Like that. So right now I'm just going to let TTL do its job and we'll see what happens, but I'll probably want to adjust the exposure as I go. So let's take a peek here. Look at my, my laptop here. Uncle Lou's looking good. 
Boom. Oh yeah, see now we have that little bit of warm light coming from the back. Now let's mess around with this a little bit. Let's, I'm gonna throw the flash in manual so it doesn't change at all. And I'm actually turning it up a little bit. Okay, I adjusted my shutter here to kind of get more of a nighttime look. So what we're getting now is basically this kind of like glow coming like almost like a sunset or whatever. It's not really realistic looking in a sense, right? Because if the sun were there, obviously there wouldn't be a light on this side of his face. But it kind of has a neat feel to it. So I'm going to, this is now just a matter of messing with my shutter speed to get it where I want it. I went down a little bit. Okay, that's, okay, so I think somewhere in the middle is where we want to be. I'm going to go here. Yeah. Now we've got kind of a fun shot, right? We have this warmth. We've got still light on his face so we can see him. We get this blur going on. And actually having that little bit of lake back there, it kind of looks like he's hiking down a trail and the light is falling at the end of the day. You know, it really has that kind of vibe. So we definitely can get a lot of different looks. So there we go, right? This is basically why we light. We light because we, we have something, a story in our head that we want to show. We, we light because we want control. We light to clean things up. And fill flash or using flash to overpower the sun or using it as a backlight, it's just different ways that we can tell the stories that are in our head, the, the visions that we see, right? Because, yeah, photography is about kind of recording what's there, of course. Uh, you know, you can walk around and there is pretty light out here and you can capture that. But you can also look at the scene and say, what do I think? What do I want it to look like? Do I want this airy shot with Uncle Leo sitting on a, 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 a the rock with light coming from the back and glowing? Or do I want it to be more perfect like a catalog shot? Or do I want it to be like a story where it's like darker and moodier and I have some warmth to it? And lighting gives you that, right? Specifically flash lighting, because with flash, we're able to overcome many things you wouldn't be able to do with conventional like hot lights. So there is a reason why we use both types of lighting and it's good to be able to kind of know which one works when and take the lights that are appropriate to what you're doing. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell. Uh, make sure you follow me and Uncle Leo, a Daniel Martin photographer, and I'll see you next time on set.